Are you getting frustrated when collider handling codes get overly complicated? You may think there has to be a better way, and you are right. You need to have a proper strategy for how to use simple colliders in a stack to solve complex problems. I will share my collider strategy for my 2D game dungeon run. However, everything I say here will equally apply to 3D games. I can break up my strategy into three parts. Collider rolls, collider stocks, collider layering. This video I will dive into collider stocks. Hi, I'm Cory Code, and let's jump right in. I have organized my colliders by their roles in my last video. While it gave us a very clear separation of functionality, it was obvious some of our game objects need colliders for more than one role. We can use these simple collider roles as Lego blocks to solve complex problems. So let me start with some simple examples first and head towards the ultimate goal, the player avatar. A simple spike trap would have two colliders in its stack, an immovable object collider for the ground to stop the player falling through and the damage collider for the spikes to cause damage. A moving trap would construct that from a movable object as the arm of the trap, which blocks the player to skip the trap and the damage collider for the blade to cause damage. They share a kinetic rigid body as the trap is moved by a script, but I place the trigger on a child game object so I can control its interactions separately. More on that later. The player in the game would have movable object colliders controlled by physics. I use two colliders for the body. So removing the top one, I can simulate crouching or rolling. They are on the root of the player game object. I got a third movable object collider to propel the player upwards to simulate climbing edges. It is only turned on by key pressed and located on the child game object. Player has a weapon to cause damage for monsters using a damage collider. It lives on a child object. It is only turned on when the attack key is pressed. The player can interact with other objects with an action collider. It also lives on the child object and it's only turned on when the player presses a key. The last one is not strictly part of the player, however players can cast a fireball, which has its own damage collider. So a few straightforward colliders can simplify a complex problem which can be solved in a few lines of code each. You probably realize we still need to filter interactions. And no, we don't need to use those ugly ifs or switches to do that. In my next video, I will show how to handle collider interactions using layers in an intuitive way. The link should be here as soon as the video is ready. Please subscribe to get notifications for future videos. Thank you for watching and see you next time.